Hello everybody, welcome to this latest episode. I am your host Robbie and this is Robbie's Talking Tees. Tarantula content for tarantula lovers just like yourselves. If you want to be a better tarantula keeper or just admire these amazing animals, make sure to subscribe to the channel, comment down below and give this video a huge thumbs up. In today's episode, I am rehousing my adult female, Afonopelma Samani, and also giving you some care and husbandry tips. Now, all that's been said, let's do the rehousing. So here we go, we are rehousing my female Afonopelma Samani. As you can see, this enclosure is absolutely atrocious. It was really nice when I put it together, but this spider being an absolute bulldozer has completely destroyed it. Look, there's water dishes in here, left in here that I couldn't get out because I didn't want to disturb her because she's molting or has been molting. And it's just completely fallen apart. Now the girl in question is down the side here. The old molt is still in there. So what I have to do is try and coax her out and last time I tried to do this she was very bolty and very flighty and she didn't exactly make it easy on me oh there she is she is stunningly beautiful look at those colors look how fresh she is looking that is absolutely beautiful so let's try right off the bat, just trying to coax her up and into this catch tube. That's not the way I wanted you to go, is it? Hmm. She's not making it easy. She has hunkered down. She doesn't wish to be disturbed unfortunately that is exactly what we have to do in order to get everything out and get her into this new setup sorry i'm knocking the camera about a bit let me just move it. Just had to move the camera just so I can get the catch tube in a better position in order to get her out. Don't know if you saw the video Annie's arachnids did on this species when she rehoused it. They can be very flighty very bolty unfortunately like this girl they can be very 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 stubborn that's it in you go in your pop in your pop there we go we've got her in the catch tube so I can give you a much better look of her. So here she is inside the catch tube. She's absolutely beautiful. She is beginning to reach her maximum size. Now these guys do grow 
between five and six inches. Females have a lifespan of around 20 years. They may live longer and males only live up to seven years, but they mature in, they can mature between three and five years. And as you know, mature males don't tend to live long after maturity. Now, I do keep all my tarantulas at the same temperature. It's 24 degrees in the tarantula room during the day. And it is also at drop down to 18 degrees at night. Feeding wise, as slings, I feed mine every other day, as well as juveniles every other day. But once they reach this size, I start to feed them once a week, a large jubia or a large super worm, something to that extent, and they do just fine. Enclosure wise, these are burrowers. Now, I've heard a lot of people turn around and say there's a out in the open, and the one thing that I have learned about this species is if you set it up terrestrially and the substrate is a little dry, they are happy just to wander around and live a terrestrial lifestyle. But if you give them deep, moist substrate, they happily burrow and they create elaborate tunnels in which they like to live in as well. So there's no right or wrong really with a terrestrial setup. They seem to be just as happy in both types of setup, which is why I'm going to give this one enough space to burrow. But also if it wants to live just out in the open on top, it can do so. But now I've said all that, let's get her in her new setup and I can tell you a little bit more about her. So here is the new setup. I have included a live plant inside it. It's only a basic setup, but it does have the basic needs in it. We have substrate, which if you look around the back here, she's got enough room in here to burrow down and feel safe in. We also have a hide, we've got some moss, my normal substrate mix, which is topsoil, cocoa fiber, and vermiculite, and also, like every species that we keep, a nice water dish. Now, I am actually going to fill that up now, because I do have a lot of people saying to me, I see that you put water dishes in there, but I never see you fill them up. So, I'm gonna to have to make a conscious effort to show people that I do fill up the water dishes when the tarantula goes into a new enclosure, which is exactly what I'm going to do now is place her inside. Oh, here we go, let's get this done. A Fonapelma Samani. Costa Rican zebra leg. Now hopefully she doesn't come bolting back towards me and just goes straight into the new home. Go on. Not being very cooperative. She's being very stubborn. Did tell you these are this is a very 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 twitchy species especially for an afonopelma they are more on the skittish side than the defensive side as far as tarantulas go which makes it a great beginner species she definitely does need fattening up 100% so over the next couple of weeks, I'll do my best to try and feed her. Maybe we'll stick a jubia in now and see what happens. Here we go, it's moment of truth time. Got medium jubia roach. Just gonna pop it there, see if she's interested. A 
worst that's going to happen is she ignores it and I have to take it out but I have crushed the head so there is no chance of the jubia injuring the spider so I'm not too concerned now this girl since I got her the past couple of years hasn't really been a super eater at all by any stretch of the imagination she's always been fussy and I always have to leave the food in there and if it's gone it's gone and if it cut if it's still there in a week's time a week's time a day's time like 24 hours then I take it out and then I leave her a week and try her again but that's just how this girl's been I'm sure if you have one in your collection you'll be able to give different feeding response results I'm just telling you my experience that I've got with this one I know the enclosure does look dirty this is just watermarks I have rinsed it I have wiped it down with a cloth but unfortunately the enclosure is so old now that these watermarks won't come off I've used warm water cold water I've scrubbed it with a scouring pad and a cloth and newspaper and it will not come off so hopefully no one pops in my uh, comments this week saying your enclosures are filthy the, the glass isn't clear honestly clear glass is not an indication of tarantula health believe it or not so yeah that's it a fonopelma samani rehoused so we'll leave her there to get settled in and end the video here so there you have it another awesome rehousing of an absolutely beautiful tarantula species now i'm really happy because she has settled in quickly and has started to dig a burrow so that is fantastic hopefully you got all the care and husbandry information you need on this species but if there's anything I've missed out or you have any questions on it, you can always ask me down in the comments and I am happy to answer them. I'm going to finish the video here, but before I go, I want to take the time to remind you guys about the 2000 subscriber giveaway we've got going on the channel. That's right. At 2000 subscribers, I'm giving one of you the chance to win a T Celadonia. And if that's not enough, I'm also throwing in a Ferrophosa Apophysis. All you have to do to be entered is be subscribed to the channel, go over and watch my Grammar Stola Rosea video, and just type T. Celadonia in the comments. Once you've done that, you'll be entered. It's that simple. We're getting so close to that 2000 mark, I can smell it. So thanks to everyone who's subscribed so far, and thanks to everyone who has already entered that competition. You guys are amazing. So I'm gonna leave it here. All I have to say now is have a good day, have a great week. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. <laughs>